Okay, so we're live. This is Travis Witherspoon from Carter Cow Capital, helping you fight for your financial freedom throughout the forex market through education and automation. Uh, this is a pop-up uh, series of the setup. The setup is a live uh, forex trading session for people that are, are new into trading. Uh, we actually end up getting cut off one time before, so I'm going to try it one more time. I'm going to go ahead and start over from the beginning for people that are just getting started in here. Once you end up showing up your face, please make sure that you end up saying, hey, uh, tell me if you're new in the trading or not or anything else like that. Uh, it's very helpful for me to be able to kind of teach uh, in that overall strategy. So with that being said, get ready to show my face once again. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, my name is Travis Witherspoon. I'm a forest trading specialist, which means that what I end up doing is helping people from their overall starting of trading and being able to understand how to be able to do it and be able to help them uh, throughout their overall months and years of being able to trade throughout mentorship. Zap, what's going on? Hope everything's going well with you. Hopefully we don't get cut off this time. So uh, everything is good from there. But I'm going to go ahead and move forward so we can go ahead and get everything somewhat done with this. I am a uh, forex trading specialist, but I'm not a CPA. What that means is I'm not going to end up t uh, telling you whether to buy or sell in this video. What I'm going to do is teach you education. And from that education, you can be able to make uh, your own informed decision about what you want to do for it, being able to trade in the market. Now, understand uh, that forex involves risk, which means that there's a risk of being able to make money as well as being able to lose money. And also, uh, past performance is not indicative of future results. So please make sure that you end up trading uh, at your own risk. So with that being said, what we're going to end up doing is that we're going to end up breaking down what Japanese candlesticks are, what they're not. We're going to end up looking at some examples of what I end up looking at on the charts and being able to break it down. And also for the people that end up staying all the way to the end, I have a special mm -hmm. offer for you for the people that actually end up staying in. So um, thank you for everyone that end up hopping back in and being able to watch this. I do appreciate your time and patience. My computer literally just shut down right in front of me as soon as I was going to a different slide and it restarted. So I do apologize for that. So with that being said, I'm going to start over again. Candlesticks basically measure the movement of a price for a certain amount of time. Now I'm going to, I'm going to actually start over real quick. If you're new into trading, I trade Forex, which means that I trade foreign, I trade the foreign exchange market. Uh, it's kind of different from the stock market. With the stock market, you can be able to own a share of a company, right? You can be able to own um, some stock and you can be able to have some type of uh, purchasing power with that overall style. With Forex, basically what ends up happening is that I'm looking at one relative currency and I'm trading that against another. So our relative currency that we use is the U.S. dollar, right? The, uh, the uh, Canada, the Canadian dollar, Japanese, the Japanese yen, and all those other things. I basically end up trading the currencies and I look at the strength versus weakness for, uh, based off of that. And I use Japanese candlesticks to be able to help me uh, to try to see uh, when there's a U-turn or reversal that's about to happen. So hopefully that makes sense. But once again... Um, use properly these formations of candlesticks will end up telling you when to get in and when to get out of the overall market so it's very important to be able to understand some candlestick formations you don't necessarily need to understand all of them especially when you're getting started but it's very important to be able to understand some of them now understand that candlestick formation uh, formations are not the holy grail of trading which means that if you look and you find this candlestick formation that you're interested in that you end up learning in it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up yielding that results what you need to do is use other identifiers such as a time frame alignment overbought and oversold indicators uh to be able to help you out and that will end up making um your decision very easy on being able to trade and i go over that a little bit more um as we move on from here so Let's talk about this. When you look at a candlestick chart, basically what you're going to end up seeing are bars. In this case, um, on most charts that you end up looking at, you'll end up seeing green and red charts. Um, on the chart that I'm going to show you on Forex.com, they actually, they actually have it set up in white and uh, black. What that actually means is one candlestick is going to represent the bullish movement of people that were actually buying during that time. And then you're going to end up having one candlestick that represents the bearish movement, which means that the sellers basically were in control at that point in time. Remember, in a forex market, this is one of the uh, this is one of the um, actual ways to where you can be able to make money when the money, when the market goes up, when the market goes down, and the market goes sideways. Right. So all we're looking for is the best setups. We don't necessarily care if we just want to buy or we just want to sell. We're just trying to find the best setups. So this candlestick, you're looking at it. What it represents? It represents the open price 
It represents the high of the day or the high of that overall time period. It represents the low of that time period and it represents the close price all in one body candlestick. Okay, Alan, how you doing? I hope everything's going well with you. So when you're looking at this, you can see that in this case, price opened right here at a certain price. And from there, it ended up going to a high of the day. Okay, meaning that um, you end up having, let's say if the price started at um, 10 and it went all the way up to 20, then the 20 would be high. Um, and whatever the body was or the average price would end up being that will end up being basically the close or basically the medium average between all of that and then after that you end up having the low of the day uh based off of that overall bullish movement the only difference between that candlestick and a bearish candlestick is that the open price is shown at the high price and you will be able to get the close price basically below so you have your high price of the day or what was the highest price where people end up selling at then it dropped to a low price and then after that you have basically that body or that wick to be able to show you everything that actually ended up going on so hopefully that makes sense uh while we're actually going through it so i'm actually going to end up going full screen from this point on so everybody can be able to see it and i'm going to give you a little bit more real estate for us uh being able to see it from there um matter of fact let me take my face off the screen okay there we go so there are two different various types of candlestick formations um and this is very simple to be able to understand after taking a look at it after a while there are decision candlesticks and there are indecision candlesticks. Both of these will end up telling you the mood of the chart and they'll both will end up telling you our overall idea about what's going on, but one of them is more definite and the other one's more indefinite. So you use both of them to kind of give you a chance to be able to understand fully about what the market is doing. Now, decision candlesticks will give you a clear picture of what happened during that overall time period. Now, once again, it does not matter if it's a one hour, two hour, daily, whatever. It, when you're looking at it, if it's a decision candlestick, you will end up getting a full body candlestick, which means that um, throughout that overall time period, there was nothing but buying or nothing but selling. Uh, you end up getting something like a, a bearish hanging man where you end up getting where people actually end up buying up to a point and then after that people end up selling it off so much that the bears fully controlled that time just like the bullish hammer right um, then after that you end up getting a dragonfly doji and a dragonfly doji bearish all of them basically end up giving you decisions about what end up happening throughout that time frame so it's really like you're under it's really like you're going through psychology and understanding people while this is actually moving on from there nick how you doing i hope everything's doing well now indecision candlesticks tells you what happened during the time period wasn't a clear direction right they didn't there wasn't a clear winner within that time between the bulls and the bears right um so this often shows up during the end of an uptrend or a downtrend, and it gives you the first indication that the trend will possibly be able to change. So anytime that you end up seeing indecision candlesticks, especially in overbought or oversold conditions, that's one of the candlesticks that I really kind of pay attention to just to be able to say, hey, something may change and this may be the time to be able to get into the market or if you're already in that position and you're looking at being able to get out of it uh, and be able to make sure that you protect your profits by being able to understand what that candlestick formation looks like, you can kind of get an early indication of this may be a chance to be able to get out because I want to be able to protect my profits. Now, hopefully that makes sense uh, as we move on uh, towards the next slide. Now, indecision candlestick, uh, candlesticks um, are two different ones. You will see a spinning top or you'll see a doji star now both of these represent pretty much the same thing if you end up looking at it you can see that price end up pushing up to a high price right and then after that um, the market actually end up pushing down to a low price within that you can see that there was average selling basically in the middle and within this this bar was basically directly in the middle uh, basically like a square directly between a line, uh, meaning that the the bulls didn't control that session, nor the bears didn't control that session. It was this average price movement within that overall time. Now, it's the same thing with the doji star. That means that uh, pretty much the price started and ended pretty much at the same price of when that time frame actually opened and closed. Hopefully that makes sense for everyone uh, as we move on. 
So there are four candlestick uh, main reversal bullish and bearish candlestick formations that we really pay attention to. And I'm going to end up going through all four of these uh, for its bullish and bearish movement. And hopefully we can be able to make sense of them. I'm going to get ready to show you some examples on the charts as well. So the first one, which is one of my favorite candlesticks formations to be able to look at is a bullish morning star. What ends up happening is that within this overall time, you have bearish movement, meaning that uh, there was more selling throughout the overall time. Then from there, you can start to see the trend start to change with what kind of candlestick is this? For the people that were just paying attention to it, let's see, let's see, let's get, let's get some interaction right here real quick. If we're looking at this candlestick right here that I'm circling, what is that candlestick? I'll give you a hint. It's an indecision candlestick. Let's see if somebody was paying attention. Okay, so good. So that's a spinning top. Now, what you end up seeing is that you'll probably end up seeing a doji star as well. That can happen within this overall time. But what happens after that is that you have a decision candlestick, right? That was bearish. You have a indecision candlestick, which was the spinning top of the doji star. And then after that, you end up having a decision candlestick that ends up happening after that. Good. Zap. See, uh, I end up seeing that answer. So what you'll want to end up doing is wait for the candlestick to be able to close that's bullish, right? And let that be able to close. And then as soon as that, as soon as the next uh, candlestick opens, then you can go ahead and take your trade. From there, you can be able to place your stop below the low of this spinning top to be able to get you the best risk reward when being able to take the trade. Now, I'm going to say that over and over again when it comes down to being able to place your stop below the low. So I'm going to stop saying it after a while because you're going to be able to see it on the chart. So let's take a look at uh, some examples. Now, if we look at this one on the left hand side, we can see that uh, we end up having this indecision candlestick. We end up having this um it's kind of a smaller in i mean we had a decision candlestick we had an indecision candlestick and then after that we had that green full body candlestick that basically ended up happening after there uh, from there the market actually ended up moving up now this is very important when you're looking at all three of these different uh all three of these different situations that actually end up happening on the chart sometimes when you're going through it you will end up seeing that um if you go down to the stochastic RSI where you have that check mark right there, you can see that it actually happened in the buy zone. So when both of them actually happened at the same time, this actually made it a strong indicator to be able to get in on the market. So this first one, if you would have took the trade as soon as the candlestick was over with, right? You probably would have ended up getting it basically right in the middle of that um, large wick of that candlestick but you still would have been in a winning position to be able to take profit. Now, it was a shorter position to be able to get into, but if you're looking at it just from the overall morning star compared to where it was on the stochastic RSI by being able to use a overbought and oversold candlestick, then you can be able to get in. Now, you look at the one in the middle, and you're just looking at buying, you can see that the chart was oversold. So it wouldn't be a good candlestick to be able to get into. You look at the one on the right hand side, you can see that there was a crossover within that happening. Now it was still somewhat in the gray zone, which means that typically I don't necessarily trade that. But if you're interested in being able to get into that trade, that will be a situation to where you could have been able to trade it from that point. OK, so the next one that we're going to end up talking about is a bullish engulfing candlestick. Now, with a bullish engulfing candlestick and for some reason, it's not letting me move my mouse in the middle. So. Uh, while I'm actually going through this, I'm just going to talk through it from the left and the right side. And for some reason, not let me use my mouse. So uh, with a bullish engulfing candlestick, what actually ends up happening? I'm going to take a step back real quick. Same deal. It happens when the market is actually moving from a bearish type of movement. Right. Uh, and you end up having a few candlesticks that are bearish or the trend is basically bearish from there. What will end up happening from there is the bullish candlestick will end up engulfing one, maybe two other candlesticks that actually end up happening before that actual price action. So if you look at it, we have this 
Uh, decision candlestick they end up happening right here at the low at the low end and then after that you end up having that huge push up uh fourth being bullish and now the bulls are basically going to start controlling at that particular point now if we go back to the slide and be able to take a look at let's see okay we go back to the slide there we go i got my mouse out and you go back here you can see that we have this full bearish movement that ends up happening right here we have this doji that end up happening at this particular point we can see in the rsi is somewhat low at this particular point and then you have this full bullish movement that end up happening after that from that full bullish movement that ends up happening after that you can see that the market starts to go up and it really never hits that low of that doji star so you could have stayed in this and been patient and allowed yourself to be able to make a lot of pips on that actual movement now understand this and I'm going to say this now because I'm going to end up saying it a little bit later. When you end up trading and you see this candlestick formation, typically the next candlestick that ends up happening will often test the overall candlestick formation. So if we're looking at this, we have this bearish movement down. We have this engulfing uh, bullish candlestick that ends up happening right here. Let's say if you open up and you end up buying it, you probably would have bought it right there at the middle of the wick right so that means that initially you will be down and you'll be against or you'll actually be losing on the trade at least starting off but if you remain patient you can be able to get into and keep large profits all the way through until you end up deciding to be able to get out wherever your overall trading plan will end up taking you out at right we look at this one on the right hand side we can see that the stochastic is coming from the sell zone to the buy zone. So in this case, it wouldn't necessarily be the best trade to be able to get into, right? We're looking at this based off of a daily time frame, but sometimes when you're looking at the candle, when you're looking at the RSI, the RSI can kind of tell you uh, lies about what's going on with the actual movement of the chart. So please remember that Anytime that you look at being able to trade on the charts that the market is always right, right? You can always have an opinion about it, but the market is always going to do what it wants to do whenever and uh, wherever. So moving on, let's take a look at another one. Looking at a bullish Harami. It's also known as a inside bar. What will end up happening, same deal. In a selling situation, you will see that uh, you will have a decision candlestick and then the bullish candlestick will end up being basically uh, either in the middle body of that candlestick or somewhat or somewhere about 60% of that overall candlestick, uh, which will end up telling that the bulls are basically controlling it from there. Now, you will see bullish haramis pretty much everywhere on trades. Um, and what they end up doing is it kind of gives you a quick indicator about, hey, if you have an inside bar, now you can be able to get in. So we're taking a look at this one again. Uh, we see that we got this bearish movement. On the left hand side, we have this bullish candlestick that's basically about the middle body of this candlestick that was uh, bearish and that was a decision candlestick from there. Uh, we enter the trade as soon as this trade, as soon as it uh, closes, we place our stop below the actual Harami low. And then after that, we just ride it up to wherever I take profit is at that particular point. Same deal right here. This was a good one because it matched up with the buy zone. And you look at this one right in the middle, same deal. Uh, it's in the gray zone, but you do see that there is crossover and overall sediment. So you can see that the green is crossing over red. So that would be an okay situation to be able to get in. And also this one right here, where it's directly in the buy zone, you have that same crossover. You have that same uh, candlestick inside the body of the previous decision candlestick that was bearish. And you can see it start to move up from there. So as I move on, before we end up moving on to uh the next ones do you have any questions um it would be a good time to be able to ask questions we're getting ready to talk about uh um uh, we're getting ready to talk about another bullish candlestick formation but if you do have any questions this would be a great time to be able to ask Okay, so uh, if there's no question, we can go ahead and move on. Now, then after that, you end up having bullish tweezer bottoms. Now, tweezer bottoms and tweezer tops don't show up all that often. 
uh, on charts. And when they do, they're very powerful to be able to look at. Now, sometimes you end up seeing that you end up having a long wick that'll basically just be at the bottom, um, just be at the bottom of the overall candlestick. And then after that, you end up having the uh, hammer uh, that ends up happening on both of them. Now, if you notice in a tweezer bottom, you just have a bearish candlestick. And then after that, you have a bullish candlestick that ends up happening. From there, uh, you end up getting that movement that you actually want in the market uh, to be able to push up. So to give you an example, um, if you look right here, we can see that there's bearish movement that ends up happening right here. We have that bearish, uh, we can have that bearish top uh, candlestick right there. We have another spinning top that's basically uh, right in the middle when both of them end up happening from there. As soon as that candlestick closed, you can be able to buy. And if you were just trying to scout the market, you would be able to get a full this was almost a 120 pip move just from right here just based off of getting to that uh overall candlestick now if you're just scalping the market that's a great move now if you wanted to stay in the market obviously you would have seen a little bit of consolidation before the market actually moved up and once again this is based off of a daily candlestick so uh you would have been in this for a while uh, before it actually ended up pushing up but going back to the overall candlestick formation if you notice even below this low the market never hit that overall bullish candlestick formation so it tested it for a while right just like what we end up talking about with each and every one of them is going to end up testing it but over time if that candlestick formation is valid then you end up seeing that the market will probably not go below that actual low of the overall price so from there let's talk about bearish uh formations now some of them are just the complete opposite of them. So you look at a bullish morning star, you can look at a bearish evening star and be able to see uh, some uh, examples of it. Now, if you're looking at this, you're gonna end up saying, well, this looks like a tweezer top. And sometimes you can be able to consider that to be a tweezer top, but in this case, I consider it just to be a bearish four bar uh, evening star on this one. Now, if we go back to that previous one, Some uh, sometimes the candlesticks actually look the same on some of them. Sometimes they look a little bit different just for the overall movement. That's just like if we were to look at this candlestick formation right here, we can see that we have bullish movement. We have bullish movement. We have this bearish movement that end up happening right there. And we have that same type of movement that was right here that will still kind of be considered evening stars for this overall movement. And plus, it was actually in the sell zone, but I didn't basically play the indicator right there. So uh, it can be shown and it can kind of match up with multiple candlestick formations uh, when you're being able to look at it. But if I was looking at this one, I would kind of ID this one as a uh, as a bearish evening star, but it's just a four bar when you're looking at it. Now, what you end up doing is you'll place your stop above the high of the actual candlestick um indecision candlestick in this case so the stock will end up being above here and then after that once again you will end up going out to whatever your take profit is within this overall position whether if it's 100 pips 50 pips 20 pips whatever it may be the case whatever your overall trading style is that's where you end up placing your stop at now with a bearish engulfing candlestick a bearish engulfing candlestick is the complete opposite of a bullish engulfing. So in a bullish engulfing, remember you had a downtrend that was happening. Then after that, you end up having that bullish movement that ends up happening up. In a bearish engulfing formation, you end up having a bull trend that ends up happening. And then after that, you have that full bearish engulfing candlestick that basically ends up covering up the body of two, maybe three uh, overall time frames of movement within that time. So to give you an example of what that looks like, we can see with the pound United States dollar on the daily candlestick, we can see that the market basically ended up moving up bullish a couple of days. And then after that, you had this full bearish decision candlestick that ends up covering up this whole move in the last two days, right? And then you have this huge one that is right here where you end up having four days of bullish movement. And then after that, the bears basically end up controlling uh, the overall time period. And you look, it can be able to cover up two and a half uh, days of actual movement toward the upside and then on this one you actually end up having this full bearish movement they end up happening now this one actually ended up happening earlier the market actually ended up moving on the pound united states dollar 1900 pips toward the downside and this was the beginning of that move so if you were to look at book uh, you would look at this uh formation and you would to look at this one as a way of being able to understand when a market is basically telling you when a u-turn right this would have been a great chance of saying hey 
I'm going to sell it as soon as this candlestick closes. I would have got in right here at the open. The market somewhat tested it, and then after that, kept on moving down until it got almost to 1.15 uh, for its overall position. Now, a bearish dark cloud cover is kind of like a bullish harami or an inside bar. What you end up getting with that is that you end up seeing that you end up having this bullish decision candlestick, and then after that, you have a bearish decision uh, bearish decision candlestick that's basically inside of that overall move. So you have one that's right here. Uh, was in the sell zone that would have been a good sale you can see the second one right here it was basically in the buy zone right and if it was in a buy zone i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily trade this pair right we know that we have this trade to be able to get in if you would have got into it at first even with this overall move and testing it it really didn't break the high of the overall move shaquanda how you doing i hope everything's going well so we go back and we take a look at another move we have five days of overall bearish movement from that bearish, I mean bullish movement. From that bullish movement, we got the inside bar that ends up happening right here. We place our stop above the high of the uh, above the high of the candlestick that's right there, and then after that, we just ride it down from there. So it was in the sell zone. It was a good pair. You have a crossover. Then after that, you can be able to trade it to a downside. Same deal right here. Uh, this is more in the gray zone, so I probably wouldn't have took that trade. So. Once again, you're looking at that. You're trying to get into a bet. You're trying to get into a pair where you have alignment, where you have a overbought or oversold type of position to be able to get in and be able to make a trade from there. Antonio, how you doing? I hope things going well with you. Now, once again, just like a bullish tweezer top, you have a. I mean, yeah, tweezer bottom. You end up having a bearish tweezer top. So, in this case. If we're looking at this moment and we're looking at this move, we're kind of seeing this uh, happen right here. We have this candlestick formation, and once again, it tested it towards the upside, but it still gave us an overall profitable position because it basically ended up matching up between that overall pair. So um, some of them can, uh, typically bullish tweezer tops and bullish tweezer bottoms are very powerful moves because you don't see them all of that much, uh, but uh, once again, when you're actually trading, it is very good to be able to at least identify when that's about to happen because that will tell you about the trend change that is definitely about to happen within that overall time. So as we move forward and be able to go through that, there's a few things that you need to remember. Okay. And I'm going to end up saying this. I don't want you to understand this. Formations represent the change of mindset. Therefore, you will typically end up seeing these in U-turn areas. So um i know we end up talking about previously in one of our videos the abcds of overall trading so you will end up seeing this uh when the market is going from b to c or the retracement area when the market is actually retracing or from c to d at the extension area where the market is actually pushing down right um typically when you end up finding those candlestick formations those candlestick formations are more powerful to be able to understand and be able to view why that's actually going from there now, avoid trading these formations in consolidation unless you're at the high resistance or the lower support. Remember, that's only two rules when trading uh, when trading consolidation. You only want to buy support. You only want to sell at resistance. There's no other thing that you want to do. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You want to always wait for the formation to be completed in the time frame before trading it because you don't know what's going to end up happening within that time frame. So it may look like, let's say you have it on a two hour candlestick, it may look like this is a bullish um, engulfing candlestick starting off, but you can see at the end of the two hours, it may end up being pushed all the way down to where the price is somewhat the same. And then you just have this one long wick. So it's very important to just confirm and be able to understand that once the you know, once it's finished, then you can be able to trade. Now, typically these candlestick formations, um, once they're formed, once again, you will end up seeing a test of the overall formation. So don't get discouraged if you end up taking a trade at the opening of a candlestick and you see that you're automatically down and being able to trade it, right? What happens is this from a psychology standpoint, if the market was bearish, right? Let's say we have a let's say we have a bullish engulfing candlestick. If the market was bearish all the way through, and then you have this one full bullish candlestick, then some people are gonna look at that and be like, you know what, that's just a blip on the radar. Let me go ahead and sell it. 
Well, what you end up noticing is that the candlestick basically in, enclosed and basically encapsulated two or three of the overall uh, movements from previous uh, time frames. So what you can be able to do is you can trade it, have the confidence that that's going to end up moving up. And this makes sure that you end up placing your stop loss into a position to where it should not be hit. Now, if it breaks the overall low, then you get out of the trade and you take a small loss. But by being able to find the candlestick and being able to get in right at the opening of the candlestick, it will place you into a good situation to be able to get in from there. Now, with that being said, uh, for the people that actually end up staying all the way to the end, um, as a gift for you for being able to stay in, what I have done is this. I, uh, I'm a, I sell and I create um, automation systems and education courses and everything else like that, indicators and one of the other things. And one of the things that I created in the past was this candlestick pattern detector. Now, I don't know about you. I don't have that much time to be able to look at the charts. Now, you looking at me and you look at the videos that I end up posting, obviously I'm posting pretty much every day, but I'm a school teacher at the same time. So that means that from seven o'clock to uh, seven o'clock to 2.15, I really don't have that much time. Ryan, what's going on? Hope everything's going well with you. So, and so sometimes being able to free up my overall time with tools that'll allow me to be able to see something very quickly always helps me out. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Um, and once again, this is meant to be able to save you overall time. If you have MetaTrader 4, or once everybody gets MetaTrader 4, because I'm going to teach you how to be able to do that at some point in time in one of these videos. I think I've done it. Uh, I've done it before, but I want to uh, show you how to be able to do this. If we look at this, we have this blank candlestick uh, or chart right here. All of these are candlestick formations that you can be able to look at. What if I could tell you all you have to do is click on candlestick patterns. Once you click on candlestick patterns and you end up open it up and you click on load uh, for the overall sheet. Uh, let's see, where is it? Where is it? And you click on pattern update and click on OK. The market automatically spots out all of the different candlestick formations that you can be able to get into. You have the bearish harami, you have engulfing candlesticks, you have three white soldiers, you have, if you're looking at it, uh, you have evening stars and everything else that I actually place in and automatically all you have to do is just click on the chart and it automatically gives it to you and you don't have to waste the time on being able to identify it yourself. It's automatically given to you. Uh, this is something that, uh, this is something that we end up doing uh, as a service for the people that actually end up trying to get started with us and being able to um, and being able to learn a little bit more. Um, this retails for twenty five dollars on Fiverr. So I'm still making money on this at this point. But for the people that actually end up staying all the way through that want to be able to learn a little bit more information about the way that we end up trading, want to be able to learn about our courses and everything else like this. We actually end up talking about candlestick formation patterns in our Fibonacci fundamental course and on our precision entry point trading course. Um, and if you want to be able to get this candlestick pattern um, indicator for free, all you would need to do is two different things. You would need to subscribe to the Carter Cow Capital channel on YouTube. Um, and all you have to do is just sign up for a free webinar at cartercowcapital.com backslash start here. If you end up doing that and you are attending one webinar and you end up telling me that you end up uh, that you end up signing up for it, then bam, there you go. I will send this to you for free, including the video of how to be able to look, how to be able to learn it, and how to be able to place everything in, um, and I give you the set file on how you can be able to set it up and go from there. This literally has 12 different formations that we look at uh, on an everyday basis for us. charts, informations, all placed into one, and you don't have to do anything aside from this placing onto your chart and be able to see it. And the arrow afterward will end up telling you when to be able to get in. So as soon as that information happens, as soon as it shows up, it gives you the indicator, it tells you the name of it, and then bam, all you have to do is just be able to enter the trade from there. So uh, that's my gift to everyone that actually end up staying in if you're interested in being able to learn a little bit more information from there. So uh, as we close out on this overall video, I do appreciate each and every person actually end up staying in and watching this video. I had a lot of fun for the people that actually end up talking to me. There's a lot of people that are keep on showing up on these overall videos. I would love to be able to teach you a little bit more about what we end up doing from our overall trading strategy. All you have to do is go to cartercalcapital.com backslash star here. Once again, what else do you have to lose? You're literally in your homes and not necessarily being able to go out. 
I literally make money in shirts and shorts or sometimes shirts and underwear, just being honest, right? I don't have to go anywhere, right? I literally have my office. That's it, right? I want I want people to be able to have that same type of freedom and being able to do it if you want to and be able to go from there. So I do appreciate each and every uh, each and every person being able to stay in and do it from there. Now, I understand this. This is a limited time offer. So um, uh, I'm going to end up doing this for, I don't know how many people. Um, uh, let's say... Let's say the first 30 people. All right, let's say the first 30 people. The first 30 people that end up signing up uh, and being able to go through that and going through this on the videos, then bam, there you go. Uh, you can be able to place it in. Yes, sir, coaching gear all day long. Uh, all I need is the hat. I always go with a white Nike cap. <laughs> But I do appreciate each and every person that ends up hopping in and going into this video. Like always, plan your trade, trade your plan. I'll see y'all in the next video. Remember, we have uh, Trade with Travis Live at 8.30 to 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, each and every weekday. Take it easy.